first you're going to want to hit shift a mesh icosphere give it five subdivisions right click and shade smooth select your camera and go to camera view then go to your camera settings and switch the focal length to a 102 so we get a nice view of the mesh then you can control s and save whatever you want then go over to rendered preview and make sure you hit this drop down and uncheck scene world and that is how what we'll be using for our lighting then head over to the shading workspace you can set this up however you want i just have a 3d viewport and then my nodes and make sure you go over to the rendered preview and do the same thing for the lighting then with your icosphere selected you can go over here and press new and we can call this whatever we want i'll be calling it amethyst like so then to start this one out we're going to hit shift a search for a voronoi texture then we're going to go to edit preferences and enable the node wrangler add-on so to do that you just edit preferences search up node wrangler and then hit the check mark then with the voronoi selected you're going to press ctrl t then you're going to take this object and move it into the vector then i'm going to grab this and i'm going to move it all the way down here because we're going to need some space for this one then we're going to switch this f1 to smooth f1 and we're going to switch the euclidean to shebby shove then on the scale we're going to switch this to a 20. if we control shift and left click we can preview what the distance is looking like and this is going to be our tiny little bump in the background and it's one of the masks essentially so then we're going to hit shift a search for a bump node like this we're going to take this distance put it into the height then we're going to switch the strength on this guy to a 0 0.3 so if we control shift and left click this we get this and if you'll notice in the future um, uh, we're going to be using some color ramps and the color is actually inverted on this so to give us some more stuff we're going to hit the color ramp here put it in between and we're just going to switch the white and the black values technically we could hit this invert node but adding this color ramp gives us some opportunities for more adjustments later so next we are going to select these guys we're going to hit shift control shift d duplicate them all up here just like this and now we're going to go over here to this voronoi texture and we're going to switch this smooth f1 to f2 and we're going to control shift and left click this bump then we're going to switch the chevy chef to manhattan and what that does is it gives us some nice gemstones around the area and we're going to leave the color ramp inverted and then we're going to switch the strength to a 0 0.5 so we can see what the bump is doing here now and if we take the normal from the previous bump and plug it into the normal of this bump we can see what they look like combined we have some gemstones poking out and it's kind of nice next we're going to select these again and hit Control shift d one more time move it up here and then we're just going to grab all these guys and move it downwards just so that it's out of the way then on this one we're going to be switching the scale here to a 10 on this voronoi texture and then we're going to leave the f2 and the manhattan as they are i'm going to grab this and move it up just slightly so now that we've set up our voronoi texture and the color app we're going to take the bump and switch the strength to a one and what this is doing is if we preview the color ramp, we can see that there's some larger gemstones here compared to this one and essentially it is adding these gemstones on top of these gemstones which is on top of this base uh, bump so now that we have all these added it's a little bit one-dimensional in the bump on this it's a little bit flat even though it is bumpy so like on the gemstones here it's a little too smooth so we're going to hit shift a search for a noise texture like this we're going to take this vector plug it in we're going to switch the scale on this noise texture to a 50 and if we control shift left click, left click we can preview what's happening we'll switch the scale i mean the detail to a 16 we'll leave the roughness and the distortion as they are then we're just going to shift d on this color ramp put it into the factor here and then sh shift a search for our bump node have that going into the height of the color ramp into the height switch the strength to a 0 0.2 so we get something really subtle right here on top of everything so if we plug this normal into this bump we have some nice subtle bump going on on top of all of the gemstones and everything this might be a little bit laggy for your viewport in the bump so if you want you can control shift and left click this color ramp so that we don't have to deal with that at the moment next we're simply going to take this normal and plug it into the normal of our principal shader 
and that is all fine and dandy. So this part is done. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to select these top three nodes and we're gonna hide them with H. We're gonna hide this all the bumps as well. And then we will take the texture coordinate, the mapping, select all the VOR noise and their color ramp. We don't need the noise texture anymore. And I'm gonna hit Shift D and move these guys up here because we're gonna be using them again. But if I were just to use the vector here and then the lines from these guys, they get very disorganized and we don't want that. So now we're gonna be factoring into some transmission stuff. And to do that it is quite simple. We're simply going to hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB right here. And if we control shift and left click this, it's playing right now, but it won't be in a minute. We're gonna switch the mix mode to add and check the clamp, switch the factor to one. We're gonna take the color from this color up into color one, the color from this one into color two, like so. Then we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna press shift D, put it into uh, the node, take color one from the previous mix and into color here, then take the color from this guy on the bottom into color two. Essentially what that does is it makes everything almost perfectly white, except for a little bit of grayish going on here. So that's a little bit too plain for the transmission that we're going for here. So we're gonna be adding in a noise texture. So we'll press Shift A and search up a noise texture. Oops, I cannot type like this. Then I'm just gonna take these guys and I'm gonna go ahead and press H on them real quick just to hide them and get them out of the way a little bit. Then I'm going to take this vector, plug it into the noise texture. Oops. There we go. Control shift and left click on this guy. We're going to be switching the scale to an eight, the detail to a 16, the roughness and the distortion we'll leave alone. Then we're going to hit shift A and add a color ramp. This is going to be the fun part. We're going to do a lot of stuff with this color ramp. We're going to take this white and we're going to put it at the very center. So select it and press it and type in 0 0.5. Then we're going to take this black and we're going to move it pretty close. To about a 0.4 we'll just do that exactly then we're going to add another node on the other side we're going to put this one to 0.6 we're going to also make this one up here black then we're going to add another node right here we're going to make this one a pure black as well add another one actually we'll minimize that one we're going to select this black node hit the plus sign so it's perfectly in between the black and the white and we are going to make it a pure black as well and then we're going to add two more nodes. So we'll add this one and we'll put it on the outside. We're going to make this one appear white. We'll add one more node on the outside here and make this also, oops, we'll make this one also a pure white. So essentially what we have is in the middle, we have a white node. Then at 0.45 and 0.4, we have a black, two black nodes. Then at 5.55 and 0.6, we have two more black nodes there. Then on the very far edges, we have two white ones. And that gives us sort of this effect, which is going to give us a nice sort of crack, cracking effect, sort of like how the gemstone was formed in the transmission, and it'll look really good in a little bit. So next, we simply just have to mix these together. So we're going to select this mix node, hit Shift D, put it over here. We're going to take this color, we're actually going to move it into color 2, and then take the color from the first one and move it into color 1. So then we simply just take the result of this color and plug it into our transmission. And then while we did that, we're gonna switch the index of refraction to a 1.55, like that. We'll actually switch to a 1.554 to be more precise. So if we control shift and left click where that is looking like in our viewport, we can see that we have an interesting effect going on here. I'm currently in Eevee, so it's not quite doing the transmission properly because I haven't switched the material settings. But if you are in cycles or something like that, then it's looking really good as far as tra transmission goes but because we don't have the color or anything it's a little bit not quite there yet plus my viewport on this pc is not the best so yeah anyways now that we've previewed that we'll go ahead and get into the color and the roughness of the material and to begin that process we will press shift a search up a noise texture right here i'm going to go ahead and put that guy way up here press Control t and control shift left click that just so that we can start previewing it then if we want to stay organized something i recommend doing is selecting all of your bump nodes down here making sure they're all hidden grabbing them moving them down and we can press control j we make a frame 
and then we can select this frame press m to open up the side thing we can label it bump and obviously this text is super small you can go into the settings here and adjust that if you want but essentially that's just telling us what this does and now we can move it all around as one piece then we can select all of these guys up here so that plus this then press Control j again we move this down here and then call this one transmission then up here this is going to be color but we haven't finished it yet so we'll be leaving it as it is so with this noise texture we're going to be switching the detail on it to a 16 the roughness to a 0.35 oops and the distortion to a 0.5 then for the colors on these, I'm gonna press Shift A into a color ramp. This is just gonna be a mask for now. Then we're gonna take this white and move it into a 0.78. Then we're gonna press Shift A, search up another noise texture like this, take our vector into the noise vector. I'm gonna grab this and move it up and make sure that we also on this texture coordinate switch from object into vector and don't leave it ungenerated. And if you wanna double check all the other ones, just make sure you can do that. Make sure you're on object vector mode from the texture coordinate then we'll press shift a here search up another color ramp plug this factor into here Control shift left click to preview switch the scale to a 40 the detail here to a 16 and the roughness to a 0.35 again and we'll leave the distortion on a zero then we're going to take this white and we're going to bring it all the way into a 0.362 ish Something about there, a 0.364 is pretty good. Basically, we just don't want much contrast coming in here. We just want little dots happening here and there. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB. And we're gonna do some interesting stuff with this. We're actually gonna take this color here and put it into the factor. We're gonna switch the top to a white and the bottom to a black. So basically what this is doing currently is it's just inverting these colors. We're gonna check the clamp here. And there's a reason we're doing that. And I'll tell you in just a second. Then we're gonna press Shift A again, search for another mix RGB right here. We're gonna put this color ramp into the factor, switch the top to a white and the bottom to a black. Basically that's just inverting this. The reason I'm using a mix node is just in case any artists wanna come after me and add in specific colors into these black and whites. But I will not be doing that for this tutorial. Just to make it easier if you wanna do something on your own afterwards. So we'll press Shift A, search for a mix node, then we're going to take this color, we're going to put it into the factor, and then we're also going to put it into color two. Then we're going to take the color from this one and put it into color one, and if we control shift and left click, we sort of get this cool effect going on here, which looks pretty sick, if you ask me, and this is the mask for our color. Next, we're just going to take this, we're going to grab it, move it up, then on our mix nodes, we're going to go ahead and check the clamp on each of these, in just in case we need that to happen. Then we're going to press Shift A, the search button. We're going to search for another noise texture like this. We're going to drag the vector from this mapping into the vector, the noise texture. Then if we control shift left click to preview, we can see what's going on here. This color is already kind of doing what we wanted to. So we're not going to change any settings on this noise texture. We're just going to add a color ramp and then give the colors our purples. So on this black, the hex value that we'll be using, I'll go ahead and read it off to you right now. It is a 2C1943. Again, that is a 2C1943. And it gives us a nice purple. Then the white node, we're going to be selecting that one. And that is going to be a hex value of B960FF. Again, that is B960FF. And that gives us more of a pinkish purple. And nextly, we're just going to hit Shift A. Add one more mix node right here. We're going to take the color from the mask, put it into our factor, check the clamp box. We're going to leave the setting on mix. Then we're going to take this purple and we'll put it into color one. Then on color two, we're going to leave this at a sort of grayish value for this moment. If we control shift left click to preview our color, we can see what's going on here. And then now that we have our color, all we have to do is we'll grab this and move it a little bit towards the left here. We will take this color, move it into the base color. Then we're also gonna take this color and move it into our roughness. And now that we've done that, we can control shift and left click the principal BSDF. My viewport is slightly laggy right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to layout so we can get the full view. 
while this renders in. My GPU is not that great, so it's gonna might take a second, especially as this is Eevee. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to cycles and then let it render out in the viewport so that you can get a nice view of what is going on here. So this is what it's looking like in about 12 samples right now. And as you can see, it looks a little bit too smooth on the in-betweens. So I'm gonna show you a quick way we can change that up a little bit and get some more variety going. So I will switch in over here. That's gonna render out in the viewport slowly, but it'll get there eventually. So this color ramp right here, if we can show shift left click to preview, this is a very interesting color ramp and it can do a lot if we factor it into our bump. So I'm gonna hit shift A. We'll actually select this noise texture bump down here. We're gonna switch strength on this to a 0 0.025, just to lower it a little bit. And if you control shift left click the shader again, you can already tell that we're getting a lot more geometry showing up in the, or a lot of faked geometry, I guess, showing up into the viewport just by changing that strength down to a 0 0.025 so it's not too strong. But to make it more interesting, we want to factor in this. So we'll hit shift A, we're gonna hit search for a bump node right here. We're gonna place this on the outside of this actually, right here. Oops, yeah, we can go ahead and connect this normal and this normal. That's what we're gonna do eventually, but for now we're just gonna cut that off by hitting control and right click, and then you can scroll over and use the knife tool to do that. Then we're gonna take this color, plug it into our height, control shift and left click this bump, and we can see we have some nice stuff going on here. But what we want is we want these cracks to be seeped into the material. So we're gonna take this invert node and check it. Then we're gonna switch the strength on this to a 0.1. And what that does is it gives us some nice sort of um, uh, cracks going into the material, which is something that's really cool. We take this normal and plug it into the normal again. It's not gonna show up in a lot of places because there's just so much geometry going on, but in the places it does show up, it's gonna look really nice. So that is super cool. Then we can shoulder shift and left click to preview the final result once again. And I went ahead and switched to the layout view and you can see that even on low samples, we're only at like 10 right now because my computer is just running slow because I'm recording, but it is starting to look really good. You can see the geodes sort of showing up here. So currently it's looking like this in Eevee. It starts off looking really bright when you first load up the scene, but if you give it a second, it starts to darken up. And if I just up my viewport samples real quick to something like 50, and then it, once it gets more, gives itself more time to render, it starts to darken and get to the colors closely. And the reason this just takes a while is because Eevee's a, a real-time renderer, and so it just doesn't take as much time to factor into things like transmission and the light bounces and stuff like that, especially for a viewport render. So if you're gonna render this out, make sure you don't leave the samples on like 10. For this material, if you're gonna render out an Eevee, make sure you up the samples just a little bit but yeah, anyway, that is our finished amethyst material. Hopefully you enjoyed and we'll be able to use this in some cool builds. And so yeah, if you have any materials that you'd like to learn how to create, make sure you comment them down into the description. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.